Hey, welcome. My name's Craig. In this video, we're going to look at how we can get the new Akai MPK Mini Plus set up in Ableton Live. So let's jump in and get started. First thing we need to do is make sure the keyboard is connected. It's connected via the USB port at the back, and that also powers the unit as well. It's then connected to my computer via USB as well. Okay, so let's get Ableton Live's preferences set up. So let's press Command, Comma to open up Ableton Live's preferences or Control Comma on Windows. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a couple of things. We're going to want to set it up so we can track the MIDI notes so we can record them and also select the remote. So that means we can enable the encoders to control parameters when Ableton Live. Also, the really cool new addition to this controller is the transport controls up here. So we can now stop, record, play, and also go across the markers on the timeline all within the surface of this MPK Mini Plus. Now, at the time I'm recording this, it's 12th of April, 2023, there isn't a control surface in here at the moment. There isn't one there yet. So there will be one. Watch out for updates for Ableton Live. There is a little bit of a hack. What you can do is you can choose, you can select the MPK 49 and then choose the MPK Mini Ports 1 of the input and output and then that will enable these to be able to record so if you look now if i go in here and i go up here and i press play it plays stop double stop take it back to the start and then record fantastic that's a really cool feature because as you know there's no I'm not sure if you know, there's no record shortcut in Ableton Live. It's really annoying, you know, like in Logic, if you're a Logic user, you press R and it's record, fantastic. So that solves that, great. Okay, so we're all set up, ready to go. So first thing to remember, if you're completely new to the MPK Mini sort of setup, it's the same as before. Keybed is default MIDI channel one drums a default midi channel 10 so how we do that in ableton we'll go to our first channel here we're going to select ins from we'll go um akai mpk mini and then channel one second one do the same thing again but we'll go to channel 10. now let's load a a kind of key sound onto channel one so i'm going to go to instruments and choose poly fantastic sounding synth let's arm that so i should have some keyboards okay now if i go up to my drums let's load in an 808 core kit arm that have some drum sounds separate from the key bed so that's that's one of the really cool features they're automatic straight out the box on separate midi channels usually on midi controllers you'd have to go through menu dive a little bit and change them up so that's that's a really cool that's a really cool feature next thing we've got is we've got the scale and chord modes so these are two new like quantizing features and these are really cool so what we can do is if we go up to here if we press scale that turns the scale mode on if we press shift scales that's where we can configure it so we can go through and we can use this encoder here to scroll up and down so the default is C major, so we can go press it in, change it to harmonic minor. Now what that's done now, is it quantizes all the notes on the keys. So even if I play the C major scale, it's, it's gonna knock the note to the next note that's within the harmonic minor scale. That's pretty cool. Let's turn that off for now. Chords, that's really cool. Again, we can go shift, and select them, then we've got basically diatonic chords within the key. So we can choose a key, so then we go. Perfect, okay, so that's really cool. If you're not got too many music theory chops going on, that's a really good handy feature to have. The other thing we need to get set up within Ableton Live is the clocking system because we have two features which are really cool with these Akai controllers, which are the arpeggiator and the note repeat. So the arpeggiator, obviously, you hold down a chord and it will go through each one of the steps at a certain time division and a certain order. And note repeat just repeats the note at rhythmic subdivision. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
just button in to let you know that if you want to learn more about Ableton Live, I have a full Ableton Live course on Udemy and on Skillshare. All the links are below. If you click below, you get a discount on Udemy. With the Skillshare link, you also get a one month free trial, which not only do you get access to my course, but every course on their page. If you'd like to get your Ableton Live chops up, click that link below and check that course out. So let's look at how we set that up first. So what we want to do is we want to set up the sync. So what we can do is press shift and sync, which is this dial up here. And we turn it one to the right until it says external. Now, just like in our preferences here, we have an input we set up. We can now set out an output. So I'm going to select sync to the output in the preferences for output port one and two. Select that. So now if I was to go turn the arpeggiator on, press something, nothing would happen because we need to have the transport playing in here. So if we press play on the keyboard, So you can control all the different options here with the keys. This is like a shortcut and you can do this by holding down the arpeggiator and then selecting the dial. So if I go arp, latch, it's now on. Okay, and then turn it off, press that again. Note repeat, same thing if I do that. I can change the subdivision here by holding down note repeat. If I go. Awesome. So that's completely in sync with Ableton now, which is really, really cool. The other thing that we've got as an addition is we've got a pitch bend and a mod wheel. Which automatically syncs up. We didn't have that before. We had this guy up here, which if I believe. It's kind of set up to the volume, which is a bit weird. And then it kind of tracks it off. So you might want to go in and remap that. That's something that's a bit confusing, that one. Other thing we can set up is we can set up CV. Now, this is what I was saying earlier in the video that one of the cool features with this is all the outputs on the back. So not only do we have the USB like we did on the Akai MPK Mini, we now have MIDI DIN in out. We also have CV pitch, gate and mod. So we can connect up a lot of things. One of the things I was really missing from the Akai Mini was that DIN. I work quite a lot in a live performance um, area and I build backing tracks for bands and MIDI controllers on stage. And with USB, you're limited to a certain distance. Now with MIDI DIN, you have up to 10 meters, which is a lot more distance to play around, a lot safer for live, so that's great. Also, it's cool for if you want to join up some hardware synths. I'm a modular guy as well. If you haven't seen already, there's modular synth in the background. This is where this thing really comes alive. It's a really good way of integrating your modular stuff to Ableton Live. So let's look at how we set that up and we'll jump over to the modular and we'll look at how we can get all that interacting with each other. So on the keyboard, what we want to do is we want to go shift and then to the where it says AB bank and that take us into the modular setup. Now as a default, the first option is the source. That's the only thing I need to worry about to start off with. What that deals with is where do you want the MIDI to come from to be converted into CV, which is control voltage. That's the language or the connectivity that we work with in modular. So as a default, it's the key bed. So if I demonstrate in a second, when I plug that in, I'll play and it will play the modular. Now, what's really cool is we can set, we can press this in and then it says, channel one and it goes through 16 channels of MIDI also goes to drums so we can just have the drum pad play it as well so you could have the key bed separate drum pad playing modular and you could go in and program the notes to play a certain scale and have like kind of like a dual kind of live setup going on so what we're going to look at is 
I'll demonstrate how to do the key, but then we're also going to look at how we can send MIDI from Ableton to this keyboard. It will then convert it into CV, send it back out to our modular. We'll record it in via our audio interface. Crazy. <laughs> Let's look at how we set that up. So if we create a new MIDI channel, Command Shift T or Control Shift T on Windows, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to rename that to uh, say MIDI to CV. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Instruments and I'm going to go External Instrument. Then I'm going to go to Ableton Live Preferences. I'm going to turn the track output for the Mini Plus. Then go down here, I'm going to select the Mini Plus port one. Then I'm going to select where I'd like the audio to come back in from. So I'm going to plug my modular into input one. So then that will all come into there and sound lovely and Ableton will deal with all the latency with this plugin. Now, if you want to record it, what you can do is you can record it and freeze the track and then drag the audio over. But what I like to do is I like to record it in real time. So I'll route the audio from here onto an audio track. So I'm going to put like CV to audio next to it. So then where we want to take the audio from is we want to take it from MIDI to CV. Make sure the monitor is off, keep that on there. And we will monitor it through this track here to get rid of latency. And then this will just record it. Okay, so let's jump onto the modular stuff. So that's the modular there, which is fantastic. So we can play it like a normal monophonic synthesizer, which is great. The next thing we can do is we can now have Ableton Live send us MIDI to the Akai MPK Plus. The Plus will then convert it into CV and then we can control, record it back into Ableton Live. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the CV setup, push and we're gonna put the source to channel one. So now I'm gonna press home. So what that's gonna do now, that's going to receive the MIDI from channel one of Ableton Live. So as soon as I press play in Ableton Live, so two bar count, here we go. There we go, we've recorded it into Ableton. So now if I mute this channel, you can just hear the audio. So that's a really useful feature with this, this MIDI controller, being able to convert MIDI to CV. So if you're looking at a Behringer semi-modular stuff or getting a modular sort of setup and looking for ways to integrate it into your live setup, this is a good option for you. So the other thing this keyboard has is it has the MIDI DIN on the output here. So for hardware synth, so I have mine rigged up to my uh, Tetra 4, which is a four voice polyphonic synthesizer that doesn't have a keyboard. So something like this would be perfect. Unfortunately, there's something that is very weird with this. When I plugged it in and I tried playing it, with the USB connected to Ableton, it doesn't allow you to do that. So you have to unplug the USB, plug it into the power to power the uh, keyboard, then it will control it. So you can't really integrate it with Ableton Live. So I'm not gonna demo that today. That was a real disappointment. There's um, something that was like, ah, oh, that would be perfect setup for your kind of live hardware setup for studio and live. But unfortunately, no, you can't do that. Okay, so you can see the Akai Mini Plus is a real powerhouse when it comes to integrating your hardware synthesizers, your modular, all with Ableton Live. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you on this channel again soon. Bye for now.